Hello, what is good, Peace Force? Welcome back to Dead Talks. I'm Miss Helen Seller, and we are here to explore the global fight for peace by talking to modern day peacemakers. Today, it is such an important topic, and one that's kind of, you know, I've been ignoring for a long time anyway, not even ignoring, just it's just not on my radar very often. And we were very, very lucky that our guest who's coming on tonight was watching Dead Talks a few weeks ago. And he posted in um, the, the conversation that we were having saying about his campaign. Um, and after taking a look, I've just been fascinated. Um, it's been honestly so amazing to read into what this young man is doing and tonight we're going to be joined by him he's going to tell us all about what it is he's doing why he's doing it and why you need to support it so yes i can see that they are with us now so let's get them on happy thursday everybody thanks for being with us tonight i hope you guys have all had an amazing day hi Hi, good. How are you? I'm rolling with the waves. Rolling with the <laughs> waves. <laughs> been swimming, been swimming. Currently looking for a, 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 a surfboard. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, you need to go to where I'm from, down in Devon. Um, but I remember I went surfing once when I was 16 in Devon, and I got ID'd for a surfboard. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so I could actually go. I was like. This is mind blowing. Oh, so no. you might need ID if you want to actually roll on those waves. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> but yeah, how are you? How has your day been? Yeah, it's been busy, but it's ticking over. And yeah, um, the journey has been quite, as you probably gather from my book, it's been quite treacherous. And we got a government that is quite disconnected, unfortunately, but it's important that we call for the action of the urgency of neurodiversity. 100%. Um, yeah, I don't know if you just heard me do a little intro, but like it's, it's really been fascinating for me reading into what you've been yeah. doing. Um, and something that, I don't know, it's just kind of not really been like, you know, other than writing alt text on Instagram and like, doing small things like that which you have to like get in the habit of doing it's yeah. not really been as on my radar as it should be and from reading all of your stuff it really opened my eyes up to how bad the situation is for special educational needs peoples and families so I thank you for you know doing You're what welcome. you do through your your trauma so yeah I guess on that um, I'd love to just like give everybody watching just a bit of understanding about one, what neurodiversity is, yes. and then two, what your story is and how your life has ended up where you feel the need to create a campaign, which is the sen the sorry the cloud send yeah. for a few form. Sure. So, yeah. so neurodiversity is where you have ADHD, epileptic, um, you have ADHD, autism, dyslexia, and dyspraxia, and it's a different way of learning. Your brain is functioned in a different way, and some students and young adults find it difficult to learn in the actual systematic way that education is currently um, laid out at the moment, and in general, they find that they need to have it broken down or they need it to have it repetized. And these are the issues that I found myself and many other like-minded uh, young adults and students find is that they have to have it broken down and they have to have these specific resources in place. And unfortunately, these specific resources haven't been in place. But that's what neurodiversity is. And it's also important to talk about epilepsy. That's not really talked about. Um, there's a number of people who have epilepsy. 
like myself and there is no nurse or doctors or anyone in a field that are experienced to know how to deal with epilepsy there is a way where you can go and train and learn how to deal with a person who's having a, a fit because it's where you would shake and you have triggers there's a really in-depth video that's on my page that talks about epilepsy also talks about adhd and talks about autism and you can find it at my instagram which which they may all find if they press the live button at the top but um yeah it's <laughs> um it's a sector that is not really talked about and over the time you have um this profile is called the Education Healthcare Plan, if nobody knows, and it's the EHCP plan, and it's a profile that student or young uh, adult, and it shows what they require, the resources that they need, and this is where it hasn't really been properly placed in the way that they've either take out vital information and that is very important paperwork and that's what's currently happened to me and um, on the point of neurodiversity it's a range thing where a number of people don't even get diagnosed concerningly um, there's quite a few people that are in uh, education sector that wouldn't even know they have neurodiversity and they're only learning later in their life um, I've only learned later in my life that I do have a bit of autism. My mum was aware of it, but I've discovered through this journey of being out of education. And autism and ADHD kind of combines together as well. That's another important factor. And they don't really acknowledge hidden disabilities and people who may be deaf or may be blind or don't have facilities for them in education sectors as much as they could recently i saw an ad where they were saying how they could provide more facilities for a person who's blind but they're able to guide their way through the school but you're thinking look how late within the time even though it's great that they're acknowledging you're thinking what happened to all those years when they could have acknowledged these kind of improvements that needed to be in place anyway because it's unfortunate that students had to struggle yeah so what is the process of getting your special educational needs plan um the process is you would go and get assessed and it would be a case where they would test to see how you uh, adapt with certain kind of so they would give you tasks and they would also assess your ability and see how you adapt and then as, you, as I'm aware, because um, I think my mum was quite young, but that's the best I could break it down. But um, they would assess you, then they would come through to tell you that you've got ADHD or you've got autism. And even the funding in that area could be more funded as well. And um, that is the process of what I could inform you on the point of being assessed. Because when I was about, I think I was assessed about six or uh five so quite young yeah yeah and then that is your plan throughout your whole education yes and what would happen is it's like a uh you could say it's almost like a kind of check so it funds you throughout your education and it's supposed to make you be able to deliver an education make you be able to cope well and have the support so for example you would have a TA you would also have a laptop provided you would have an audio you would have facilities that make it a bit more easier and then also you can have like these colored cards that would break down so you know when you're reading and mm -hmm. for a normal person if they read a book because of the black and white writing it would be confusing for a neurodiversity person in the fact that it would look all jumbled up and it's important for them to have it on like a different type of coloured paper or type of coloured kind of um, card over it. And this is like a transparent card and that would really help. And those things are really vital for a student who has neurodiversity, particularly yeah. dyslexia. Yeah, so I actually have some of those cards. Um, and oh. I, don't, I don't know about you, but like, yeah, I, I think... Um, and this 
goes perfectly with the question that comes in like do you get you got um your plan you know done or whatever um yeah. when you're very young um but like do they reassess you in secondary school because for me it was only when I was doing my A levels that my economics tutor said to me oh you know I think you're dyslexic and I was like oh really like you know did my test and then all my grades went up when I had the extra time you know so it's like it seems like it takes a long long time for people to get them um, and that and that difference in when you said that your grades went up because could you imagine for a person who is not diagnosed and the person that goes into exam and they could have that extra time and the difference that could make in them delivering with their grades and of course I think with the assessments I think they need to this is why the S, this is where the SDN law comes in is that the fact to what I found in my education is when I went to secondary after eight years fight which my mom uh, fought for the best placement for me that had neurodiversity students not severe like autism but you know like-minded neurodiversity was, was that students. a mainstream school or a specialist school? that was an independent um, the first primary was a mainstream and I had a horrendous time, as you probably read in my book. I was uh, suicidal at the age of eight and I used to self-harm myself. So it was quite a time where I was discriminated. And this is why, for example, the report that came out recently with the institutional racism, things like that don't basically bring action. They are factors that um, are words and reports that really don't explain what we've been through or what myself has been through I've got the scars of my life experience of what I've been through and it's not been easy and I've had to work 10 times harder to achieve the best because as a black young male you find that you have to achieve the best because if you don't achieve the best you're not able to fund you're not able to do well and you're not able to have those same opportunities and very much the same for social mobility. But to bring back onto the um, my schooling, on that point of view, what I found, when I went to college, I wasn't assessed, I wasn't assessed again. And it was the case because I went back into mainstream college. So I found that, of course, I had a big choice where I could either say it in independent or I could have gone mainstream. However, I felt I needed to get more grades, but it made me have drawbacks in the fact that my assessment didn't um it wasn't progressive in the fact I wasn't assessed again and also especially for my exam that's so important and I found that things of course derailed unfortunately and then this is where I've left college and then I ended up where um I was going to go to uni as I um explained in my book but what happened was, is I didn't have the grades for uni. So I found that I have to still be in further education. And this is the choice that I made because I thought, how could I go to a course which they are offering me, but I don't have the grades for. They gave me an open day letter and everything, but they didn't give me my disability student allowance. So they wanted me to go on this course at uni without my disability student allowance and struggle and only have my student finance. And you think, what is the logic of me being able to have the support I need and being able to achieve well? So after 2017, um, I was in a kind of shock of being out of education unelectedly and found that... Um, I had no placement and of course I was coming to the age of 18 at the time and had the housing people who were saying to me, oh, what do you do? Do you work? Are you in education? What's your vacation? However, I wish to still be in education and I'm a student. But this resulted for me to be sofa surfing and this is where I feel that youth homelessness doesn't get reported as much even so for surfing and there's a big pandemic of uh youth homelessness in the united kingdom that gets you could say it's, it's invisible within our system and it's an important topic to talk about and this is why i feel that that should change that students shouldn't feel if their education went wrong that they have to go to work 
they can have the options that they are provided for and that they are cared for within having the option of going to study. Yeah. So I just want to draw a little bit more clarity on like yes. why you were suddenly denied your education. Um, I was denied my education because of funding. Um, any of the placements that I would consider that would be appropriate and that would be accommodated for myself would be too much for the local authority to fund. And it's always this issue where they have the money and we get told by the local authorities that they don't have the money. And they, as we saw with this pandemic, they have money to put signs up. They have money to close windows within certain like areas. And you see how you much they've pulled out. Stockpile by 40%. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you wonder where the money's going. But they would tell me that they don't have the money. And I found that, of course, this is where I've not been catered for. And I do wonder if it's because people like you and me, we are neurodiversity. They find us as a threat because we see things in a different um, way and we have the solutions in a way. Unlike the government leaders who unfortunately are from a rich background, some of them, and they don't really understand what an everyday social mobility uh, or, yeah, social mobility, I think that's the word, um, person who's an everyday publican, views are. And, of course, as you see in government, our views as y youth and people from, like, um, up in the north are not really being heard. To be delivered. It's so, so fascinating how this conversation has come so quickly onto that issue of misrepresentation and disconnect because mm. in the last few like obviously I can't remember I've done like some like nearly 40 dead talks now but like literally I feel like the last like 10 or 20 someone in some format has brought up that same thing you know it's that how you know to us it's common sense yes to us, we can see that like people with neurodiversity have, you know, their own unique amazingness, which could be a huge value to society and yeah. should be. And of course, equal opportunity for all. You're like, you know, we can talk about Black Lives Matter. We can talk about the institutional racism, which is here in the UK. <laughs> Ignore yeah. the report. Um, that's biased as hell. Um, you know, but again, it's like, this frustration of we literally live in the most connected world ever. We could, mm. we've got phones, we've got the internet, you know, we, there's no excuses for politicians to actually be listening to people and making their budgets based on like a fair evaluation of the situation for real people in their everyday yeah, lives. Right. I and I have to say, I have to say, I think we have to give a lot of credit to the publicans because when they do turn out, they turn out. If you ask for support and you ask for help, they really do turn out. And it's lovely to see, even at the royal weddings that we've had, they would turn out in their millions. They would cheer on for celebration. Even when it came to the uh, school mills, when the government rejected that, they helped out all of those businesses. They came in their millions and thought to give food to the you know uh, less un unfortunate um, youths and you know this is what we keep on seeing is that the publicans more understand the people and this is why I felt that even though people may say to me the government might not listen on another hand it's important that the pe we all come together all connect and make this change that we urgently need. Oh, I, lo I lost your last few words there. Do you mind just repeating? Sure. Um, so I said that um, it's important for us to all come together, connect and make the change that we need. Yes. Did you get Yeah, amazing. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's just amazing how connected this conversation is to everything. And as I said at the start, it's, you know, something that hasn't really been in the forefront of my radar. And now it's like just 
fitting in perfectly because even when we're talking about the police and how we would actually like them to be there for the community rather than enforcing law like you know it's that same mentality of like actually we need to just like speak to people like yourself who are going through these issues and see what they need and make sure the money is available for them um i just quickly come to amelia foxen hey davina um they Hi. say my mum does ehcp what's ehcp it's an educational healthcare plan so it's um a thing that david cameron bought in oh, okay so it's quite new then yeah but the other thing i do have to say importantly about the education healthcare plan it isn't um good in the fact that we had a, a, a template that was called a statement before and he brought the education healthcare plan in to uh, make the local authority not be able to fund for education in the fact of that it combines the social workers and what's this what it's resulted to is social workers taking children away from families just to not provide education so there's a lot of corruption as well that goes on even within the court systems i've been to more courts than being in the education sector and i found that um even with my evidence that has been submitted from my mum and with because she's my, my appointee, it would be not there on the day and it would be taken out. And that what they would do is they try and make it that it suits the local authority. And you find that there's a lot of kind of like, you can't even trust the lawyers. Like you would, you would have thought you would trust the lawyers and you find that even there's corruption in that point of view where the lawyers are kind of siding with the local authority. So it's so important to find that middle ground, but unfortunately we don't live in that world. Yeah. And that's exactly what um, Davina said. It's like the privatisation has made it so difficult for schools to yeah. fund what people need. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and we've got LFK Hiya, um, saying a local police yeah. person who knows their community. Exactly that. And, you know, what you're talking about is like a local educator that knows the people that they Very are true. serving. So let's just let's just go back into you've been to you've just said that you've been in and out of court more times than like you've been in education because of this whole situation. Yeah. So talk us through that. What what were you fighting for in court? Well, it's always for education. And then my mum's been told that, oh, you want the best for your son. But it's not what my mum wants the best for me. It's the case that she is fighting for me being entitled to an education that I am lawfully entitled to. I should be educated. I should be, um, I, sh I should be able to have a social circle. I should be able to uh, achieve what I want to achieve, not be isolated and not be cut off in the point of view that the amount of times that right now I'm currently home, I'm currently sofa surfing and I'm currently on the sofa at home. And this is the situation and this is what's gone on. again and it's that factor of oh we just saw the that wheel of doom Sorry. for a second there yeah okay <laughs> uh did you catch what i last said by the way no i got it's it's that um no problem yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, so yeah, I've had that factor where even in mainstream, it's so corrupt. You would find that your support's not being provided. You would find that I've always found that I've always had to make sure that I'm getting what I'm catered for. I'm make. I've got to make sure that I get the extra time. I've got to always repeat myself. And it's a factor where it's like they would try and make it that I would be an exam and not probably have extra time. Um, I would also probably be in a classroom and not have a teacher assistant, unlike an independent placement. Some people, they say they prefer mainstream, but I found that mainstream does work with the local authority. And this is where I feel that within the clause SCN law, the local authorities need to be looked, uh, watched over by a board of parents who understand and who have neurodiversity uh, students. And 
people that are like-minded and understand you and me. It's so important. So your mum was fighting to see the courts bring more funding to your area. Well, not that exactly, but she was fighting for my education because I was um, so, so not was happy like at primary. Funding or... um, it was the factor of... Um, she wanted a placement for me. I mean, she found a placement for me and I was happy there. And uh, we asked for the local authority to provide me to start there myself. And it was the case that we had a situation, of course, where it was a eight years fight because it was the case that they didn't really want to provide it. They didn't want to fund for it. And they didn't want me to have that opportunity until I had a wonderful board of um, women who thought to the local authority, why is this boy out of education? Why is he missing so much years? And they granted me to start at that placement in 2008. Wow. Yeah. It's so shocking. It, re it really is. Um, and I, I just want to come to this video I watched on the BBC when I was just doing a little bit of research in preparation for this talk. And there's a six year old who has autism and he basically, you know, his mum was, see, it sounds like fighting for a similar thing, just fighting for um, him to get his, um, forget the acronym, I'm so bad at acronyms, but the the card, you know, the report which tells, says what um, neurodiversity you are or... Education healthcare plan. Exactly, that that's the one. The plan, the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they were fighting and it meant that when he came to be ready to school for school, he didn't have one in time. So mm. he went into a normal mainstream school with his, you know, extra needs not being mm. taken to. This wow. meant that after two weeks, this is a six-year-old, he was yeah. excluded from school. You That's know. another topic. That's um, another topic that's awful. Yeah, it's right? the number. But I spoke to I spoke to the group No More Exclusions a few weeks ago. Mm. And watching this video, it's like really sunk it in for me because he was excluded. Um, at which point he was so traumatized and upset by that exclusion that educationally he actually went backwards to a few years and where wow. writing and drawing and you know doing normal stuff like that because he was so traumatized and obviously associated those things with school he just stopped mm. doing them and now he's been out of education for two years as well he's got wow. his he's got his plan but there's no place for him in no placement Wow. All I could say is that what I think is really awful is the years that are missed. Because I think those years where, you know, for certain subjects that may be difficult for a neurodiversity student, and they are missing those vital years of understanding that subject. For myself, I think it's so important that, like, I've missed so much of maths. That's why I kind of struggle with it. It's only just in my later life that I've understood maths. And I'm sorry to even hear that with that um, student and to hear that he's been out of education for two years and that the fact there's nothing being done, there's nothing being acknowledged. And it's a serious, it's a serious thing that's being criminalised for many students and many students like myself. So I think it's so important that we t have this discussion and thank you for having me and I just think it's really quite um yeah it's it's, it's awful it's awful that it's it's a, it's a topic that we have to talk about and have to address and this is where you feel like why is it for us youth to have to bring these discussions it's really shameful for those adults but hopefully we can make that change we can make that action and even for hidden disabilities the dld which is a disability student uh, disability dld is um disability living allowance and it is called a personal independence payment now and it discriminates particularly like myself as a person who doesn't have visible disability i've currently been stripped away of all my money and that really doesn't help me because I need 
like my mum, she needs to provide like a smoothie for me to kind of control my, you know, issues that I have, like my epilepsy, uh, medication and that stuff. And homeopathic stuff, that it really could. That's the stuff that is more um, better for my medication right now. If I had the epilepsy medication, I would feel really drowsy. But um, the homeopathic is really helpful. And right now I've been stripped away of all my um, payments and what's happened now is they've left me high and dry is that because you're not technically independent yes when i am in the i i i i i I am struggling yeah you know what i mean it's 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 like universal credit like when you know if you're like living with say an abusive father um or mm. an abusive person i don't want to like stick fathers in there, but you know what i mean an abusive person you can't get independent universal credit because you're living with someone so you can't it's more, know- it's, more it's it's more the factor of uh it's what it is it's for like a person who they call they call it independent when i'm not independent but it's a disability and it's finance to help um for like the stuff that i need and what's happened at the moment is, like I said, with the uni, they, they, they thought I was going to go on a course without all my disability finance. It's the same situation, but it's where I'm not in education. And it's just what's been uh, catering for me from when I've been up until now. And that's what's happened. They took out my actual uh, finance that would help my mum to uh, fund for me as a person who has disabilities. And they don't really acknowledge hidden disabilities. So it's a system, they call it personal independent when you're not really independent, but that's what they called it. And I can't remember, I think that's what it was called, uh, disability finance or something like that. But um, it's not really productive. And there is an epilepsy action, a board that uh, are looking at a reform for uh, the personal independence because they're not happy with how it discriminates a number of um, young adults and particularly uh, people in general. Right. It, it, it really is crazy. I'm, I'm going to come to some comments and then yeah. let's talk a little bit more about the budgeting and stuff because I know that um, something you talk a lot about what could help um special educational needs yes. people and families is finance support and yeah anyway so i'll just come to these comments um back to davina long story short if you can't get a ehcp um and you need one you're kind of screwed is fucked truly um you know much more about this than me but i think it needs to be far easier for schools to provide support for people with additional needs what what do you think about that and can you can you visualize that? Uh, yes, I think it's important, but I think it's important for they get watched over with the finance because I believe that there is a f- option for SCN families where it's called a personal budget, and the personal budget is a set of money that gets paid to the parents and students within their bank account, and they are, get to. Um, fund for their education without any corruption happening without any miseducation or without any misfunding and it's an important uh, video that I've got on my Instagram that you can uh, feel free to visit and you can see that video that explains it to a broken down way of what a personal budget is and it's and it's where they directly pay it to you okay so I know this this is going to sound like a bit obvious because you've already explained the, you know, horrific experience. No, that's fine. Had, um, you know, just because of the current education system. But if you had your card, you had the finance, um, that wasn't an issue um, and there was space for you where you needed to be, would you have everything you need? Um, it would be the case that I would. However, they feel that even particularly in this time, um, that home educating is the best option. But yes, if I had if 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 I had the funding and if I was delivered and for example if I was able to start now, it would be 
the best and if I was catered for and I was able to succeed, yes, it would be the and better what about, one. What about in everyday mainstream schools? In mainstream schools, I feel they need to be watched because that's where I find the difference in behaviour and also difference in delivery. Uh, you would hope that you've been delivered. However, it gets where the same co ends up um, not. So, like for example, I've got an example uh, situation. There's been a family that um, had their students in school and the parent was blocked from the school all because the child wasn't being funded their education. So instead of, because they felt very awkward with basically not funding for that child, they felt they had to go to measures where they made up stories of saying that, that parents should be blocked from the school and they should leave their child at the gate all because they don't, they feel uncomfortable that they've done not well for the child and they haven't delivered for their education and wow. that's one of the catalysts of many other horrific stories that you could probably find on SEN groups you could find on articles you could even find the amount of parents that have gone to high courts fighting for their children for an entitlement of education and this is where we've got to change the rhetoric. We've got to change the rhetoric for the action of no more bullying, no more control, no more control of the mainstream schools, no more control from the local authority. And we've got what to make it... What do you mean by no more control? What's been happening is, is this is where, you know, people would say, oh, that's so awful, the mainstream school. However, they were controlled by the local authority in the fact of that the local authority doesn't want to deliver for that child. So because the local authority doesn't want to deliver for that child, they've collided with the school, but they can uh, cut down, no different like the uh, government cut down our important facilities like NHS and many of the sectors. They feel that they can cut down the uh, student's education, but they don't have to deliver because it costs money. The As, as a perfect example, I could say, um, this is why I require right now that when I start my education, I have a personal budget, which I re request. Because throughout my educational life, I found when I'm in negotiations with the local authority who would fund my education, I find that I am the pot of money. And when I go to that placement, so, for example, when I went to Nora Hill, had a wonderful time, had a wonderful experience. However, the end experience turned very bad in the fact that they wanted to keep my photography work. And in the way that they wanted to keep my photography work, they said it was an intellectual matter. But I saw that they were making my school, my previous school, trying to make it um, change, change school uniform, change face. And this is what they do. They change the face of these independent placement and they're either trying to change them to academies or they try and change them, but they have more of a different profile to be more uh, for the local authority in not providing more funding and facilities and delivery for the students wow and um, you could and you probably read did you read that part in my book that probably yeah. mentioned about it yeah and that and it's just confusing <laughs> yeah sometimes it is they make it so confusing when it's simple it's so simple all I'm asking for is to be delivered with education and it's like it's like it's, it's like it's like um climbing Kilimanjaro yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay I'm gonna come to some comments because actually like this is what I'm thinking now I'm looking at what I'm like yeah that's literally what I'm thinking because like and it's the same thing of what we're dealing with at universities mm. and it's like this rapid marketization of our education um mm. so yeah we've got education budgets have um been cut hugely for all state schools a lot are really struggling for money they are it's just sad they're having to balance budgets between senco and other areas that need money the finance is often private the gov reduced funding yeah. for local authorities in osborne era and that, that's yeah, we require it. to answer that. We require huge transparency, and I think it's so 
um, it's so unfortunate that we was underneath a government of David Cameron and that coalition because it wasn't good for most of our sectors and it wasn't good for also education. Education got a really big cut down within the facilities because this is where, you know, we have the education healthcare plan, which I think needs a reform because as a 23-year-old right now and who's been out of education for four years, when it comes to the time of when I go, I won't, well, round the corner, I won't be far off from 25. And the EHCP plan finishes at 25. So they could turn around and say to me that they don't have to provide me education. So I feel that it needs to be extended. Yeah, it really is. That's so stressful. Oh, my God. I know. Right, okay. This is a good time for us to get on to the Cloud Sen, um Law. The Clause SCN Law. <laughs> Claude's SCN Law. I know. I keep, are you wanting to stick reform in there for some reason? The Claude's SCN Law. Everybody that's watching, make sure you either go to Claude's page or it's yeah. now in our um, link tree on our page oh, as well. Lovely. So either one, go on there, sign the petition. And this is what you're signing. Please explain. <laughs> yes. So you are signing a petition that delivers education for SEN. It also acknowledges for neurodiversity, epilepsy, and the importance of qualified teachers to also uh, provide a, a degree or some sort of qualification where they are able to know how to, uh, you could say, teach and also able to uh, have a qualification in neurodiversity. Um, also to improve our facilities of education because some of the conditions which uni students and students in general have to experience are not the best conditions and there is so much money that we need to call for for education it is if we don't call for this money for education it's going to be a forgotten sector and it's important to make that change and to also acknowledge neurodiversity within our work 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 uh, environments as well because there are some people who may feel they're not being catered for or being uh, you could say given equal rights within a work uh, environment or even in the education sector youth homelessness should also be talked about and i think it's a thing that should be acknowledged not for a student to feel that they have to go into work and feel that if they are want to study and if they want to be in education, they should be obligated to have that right. And they should also feel that they don't have to sofa surf and also feel that the local authority are delivering for them. If the local authority are not delivering for them, it's important that the local authority get watched over as I require from my clause SCN law to call on by a board of parents who have students who have neurodiversity and the acknowledgement of reforming uh, DLD and personal independence payment that is an important thing to be reformed. Wow. It just makes it just makes so much sense. And like I think now is just an important time to say, you know, talk about COVID because stu university students you know in in all in all have been completely forgotten completely mm. underthought about um you know told to go back to university and then just met with horrible conditions and just some completely inhumane oh, just insensitive uncompassionate horrible mm. treatment um all while they can't socialize they can't do the normal things which keep people sane <laughs> you know so there's that and then we have the forgotten within the forgotten, which is yes. then people and families. And I just can't imagine how tough it has been, been for people um, like yourself who are being denied their rights and almost put in a bit of a standstill. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's just... Most of the time, it's like, yeah, as you said, it's a sense and I think that's the perfect example of it. And I'm a person that it's brought my anxiety up most of the time because I'm really concerned. I've even had trust issues within mainstream placements because I don't know if they are either supporting me and for me or if it's the case that they're either 
you could say um having a cake on my on my education money if that makes sense you know what i mean and these are the trust issues that have developed over years and it's a fact that it's been so difficult and i'm sure this will be very emotional for my mum when she watches it because it's been such a tough journey but i'm i'm optimistic that we can make that change and i really appreciate for all the people that have joined this call and everyone in the United Kingdom to please support the cause of SEN Law and let's make that change and let's make some waves. Yes, everybody grab your surfboards. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah, I'm just so so happy. I feel like we could talk forever, and I know we've we've run yeah. <laughs> for a while. Um, I wanna, you know. I think maybe we sh we should jump back on another dead talks in a in a month or so or in a couple months. Oh wait, it's you you Whatever. need the signatures before June, right? Pardon. Oh yeah, before the tenth of June, I need a target of ten thousand signatures. So um, that is the top. That is the dead. That is the deadline for those to hit that goal for the clause SCN law to be considered in Parliament by. Uh, the Prime Minister and the rest of the politicians. Okay, amazing. So I'm going to ask you a final question, which is like the new thing of Dead Talks, and I'm really excited to hear your response um, from a SEND perspective, um, which is why demilitarise education? Um, the fact of we, why demilitarise education is to end the years of fighting and to provide the education which we are entitled to, to be seen in the world and to have the highlight of having an opportunity of being delivered education and not having the same kind of stops within our gaps of our life. Amazing. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful and it's so powerful and it's so important. Um, and I'm just thinking of that. Okay, I've forgotten who said it, that quote, <laughs> that famous quote where it's like, you know, until everybody is free, none of us are free. And until Wonderful quote. all of us are educated, none of us are educated, you know, it's it's like we're only as strong as um, our weakest player. And if we're leaving people behind, we're leaving, our, you know, we're letting ourselves drag behind. So yeah. full solidarity, my brother. Okay. Likewise. so. And you. thank you. And everyone, please do uh, join the social media storm that's going on at the moment. If you all just put in the hate tag clause SCN law that everybody can in be informed. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I, do you have any final words to say before I end the call? Um, all I'm going to say is thank you. And I look forward to making these uh, important changes within these important topics. And I look forward to hearing more stories from other people. And if you do have a podcast, anybody, I'll be happy to join and to discuss my story like this one. And thank you very much, uh, Jin. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And, you know, for being, putting yourself out there. Um, you know, it is, it's hard things to talk about. And you are sharing your experience with us, which is just fully appreciated because I've learned so much today and you've really opened my eyes up to this topic so thank you for that and I'm thanks for coming on you. thank you <laughs> and have a great evening yeah and you thank you to everyone that's watching you've been amazing next week we've got an exciting dead talks because um it's these two guys that broke into an arms fair um and they did a vice article um last month so I'll be putting that on our story, so come through for that. Make sure you go to Cloud's page right now and sign the petition. And remember, we ain't dead yet. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone.